Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this morning I've got uh, an interesting article actually to discuss or an interesting point uh, which actually surprised me this morning when I read through it. Um, this is apparently that real estate jobs have grown in Southern California uh, in October. Um, so obviously this data is about a month old, but it was 2.1%. Uh, now what I'm experiencing in real estate, and obviously I see more of the kind of residential sales agents and mortgage lenders is that it has not been the case um, or it's the opposite of that. Um, it's an, a weird market right now, just to kind of give you guys uh, kind of a, a small overview. Uh, this is being recorded at the start of December 2023, uh, if you're watching back in the future. But um, we've seen a very interesting change in the market, which is a huge incre increase in interest rates. Now, <clears throat> in the US, which is different to other markets that I've worked in, i.e. the UK, uh, here people fix their mortgage rate for about 30 years, and that's not always the case. Uh, but generally, most of the clients that I work with, that's normally the term that you're fixing your mortgage for. So now that interest rates have risen in the last 12 months from about 2 to 3%, all the way up to uh, really 8 or 9% is what some of our clients are now getting is a mortgage that they would have uh, qualified for that lower amount previously for, uh, that has now led to the fact that no one really wants to sell their house. Now, I think that that is variant on people's uh, situation. You know, you may need to upgrade your house or you may need to sell it for financial reasons, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it does generally mean that if someone is living in their house right now and they have paid $1 million, as an example, before they were going to be paying $20,000, sorry, uh, yeah, $20,000 a year uh, in interest, twenty to $30,000. That's obviously kind of plays out to two and a half thousand ish a month. That has now increased to a point where if it is eight or 9%, you're paying eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. So you're effectively tripling, you know, quadrupling to tripling your monthly outgoings or your yearly outgoings just on interest to live in the same house. So if you have that rate locked for 30 years and, you know, you have maybe 20 years, for example, on that mortgage, it may seem like an awful idea to sell that house because at that point you need to get a new mortgage on a different property. Now, even if that property is, you know, a third of the value, you're going to be paying the same amount of interest as opposed to uh, if it increases or it's the same amount, then you're paying a lot more money to live in a, in a similar house. So it stopped a lot of people from selling their houses, which has meant that the actual uh, supply and volume that has come out in the market has reduced significantly. Uh, there are buyers out there, but there are uh, much fewer buyers than there were previously in the 2021, 2022 markets, when obviously those lower rates were there. Uh, those markets were huge in terms of number of sales and the prices. Uh, for instance, I actually bought my house at the end of 2021 uh, and we paid, we had seven multiple bids that we were competing against to buy the house. So there were that many people who were looking to buy uh, and would offer on a property at that stage. Luckily, we won that and I'm living in my house now. But that is a, a kind of example of the difference. So what I've seen because of the lower volume is that we've actually seen prices kind of stay where they're at you know because there's so much less supply and there are more buyers people have kind of adjusted to i'm going to be paying a higher interest if i lock in my mortgage now maybe in a year if rates come down then i can renegotiate from the eight percent maybe down to five percent four percent and so they want to lock something in so there are buyers looking but not in the same volume and there are properties that are coming to the market but a significantly lower volume so <clears throat> it has meant that real estate agents have found themselves in a difficult position where just the amount of properties that are going to transact, i.e. what they're going to be paid commission on, has gone down a lot. So if an agent previously, a year ago, was doing 12 transactions a year, that, that may have reduced to three or four. And so therefore their income has dropped in like a lot. So that also, I think, in my mind, and from what I've seen, has led to less agents potentially looking at real estate as a future career. You know, if you're if you're thinking, right, I'd like to go into this industry and I could make $100,000 a year, <laughs> if that has suddenly decreased to $30,000 a year, it does not look like a particularly good thing to be getting into. Now, looking at this and apparently the 2.1% increase actually in the amount of jobs in the real estate industry, when I saw it, I was very surprised. 
However, this does actually factor in um, jobs from all of uh, the real estate industry. So that's not just agents, uh, mortgage brokers. Uh, that's also people in construction uh, and investors. So I can kind of see after reading through this where that may have increased and actually overshadowed a decrease in other areas. Um, so apparently it's 2.1% uh, in increase, and this is Southern California, which leads to 16,300 new positions, which is a lot. Uh, this uh, upswing um, is showing a market recovery. And apparently in the spring, uh, that was a very different situation where 4,600 real estate jobs were lost. Uh, and that was in March. So, you know, it was part of six months, nine months, but six months, nine months on from that. Uh, and we obviously had a big change going from 4,600 losses up to 16,300 uh, new jobs. Um, now, obviously, I mentioned the economic headwinds we're going through um, and obviously the reduction in the amount of property selling. So you would think, as I thought, that there were less and less um properties that were going to be brought to the sorry less and less properties transacting therefore less people having jobs or jobs being lost i have probably four or five colleagues that i've worked with or, or friends that i've worked with in the past and they have all started finding a secondary uh income to support their lifestyle now i think being a self-employed person if you're not aware in real estate in as an agent you are self-employed and so you are only paid on what you do you're not paid a salary uh, you are paying a percentage of your commission to your broker who is giving you the support but you are only earning your own money in that uh it, you're only earning your own money from the commission that you're you're effectively getting from selling these properties or leasing i should say so i have seen that those people have actually said look i need to pay my rent i need to support my kids and do those kinds of things so they've actually looked for second second um second incomes that will support that including one friend i think actually who's now working in a bar and so that's a great job to do and actually in um the us with tips and how actually the service industry is that is a good a good uh, source of income but he has diluted his focus on real estate now to be doing that as well which is something i didn't see before so obviously there are economic headwinds not just in real estate but actually you know looking at the growth of the economy uh but i think and what this was kind of talking through is a lot of that gain is in the construction uh, side of real estate uh, jobs and so what I have also seen and this probably makes sense having given you that context is that because people are not leaving their houses or selling them or um, buying a new house a lot of people therefore have decided that they are going to be stuck stuck no they're going to be living in their house for a long period of time and as opposed to spending that money on a down payment for a new house they'll spend that on construction now that is improvements making the home you know interior better that may be doing an extension onto the back of their home and adding the square footage so if they need to upsize they're going to do that instead and so therefore a lot of construction companies are incredibly busy uh they are now you know experiencing probably two to three times that's just a complete estimate the amount of demand for their work than they previously had and so they're probably hiring a huge amount more contractors and subcontractors to be filling the void and coming into that so i can kind of see where that is going to outstrip the losses that may be in other sectors the other sector that I've seen uh, a big drop off in is the mortgage broking uh, sector where I spoke actually and had lunch with one of my mortgage broker contacts a couple of weeks ago. And he said that their volume is 20% what it was 12 months ago. So the amount of loans uh, that they are financing is only 20%. And that's for two reasons. What I've just mentioned is that people are not buying houses and they're not really selling houses to redo a mortgage. And the other side is refinancing. So in the US, and I know this isn't the case in the UK and most other places, if you are have a mortgage with someone or a bank or a lender, and suddenly you find another lender with a better rate, you effectively can refinance and go to a different lender for a better terms or mortgage uh, interest rate. So you are reducing that payment. So these mortgage brokers used to do a lot of that business, which has now completely dropped off. So that has uh, contributed to that volume that they're doing dropping to 20%. And so therefore, the amount of people going into the mortgage broking industry, I think will also have decreased significantly. 
So that is kind of where I think it is at the moment. Um, apparently, we are 10% in terms of the real estate market of jobs in Southern California, which again was a fit figure that really blew my mind. Um, and 7.3 million people employed across all of the industries. Um, so it's 9.9%, .9%, not 10%, sorry. Uh, so this is going to be something to watch. I will kind of keep you guys updated on future videos uh, just to kind of obviously see if that continues and we have further increase um, and if I can get more information on this. The other thing as well which I think is interesting is the data is hard to get on real estate agents. Uh, as I said all of the agents that I work with are self-employed and so therefore they're doing transactions but it will show on the data that they are a real estate agent and that is probably just showing from they have a real estate license so they've gone through the licensing and got that license and they also hang that license with a broker and there are a lot of agents that probably will not have said right I am no longer an agent and therefore I'm leaving this industry they probably still have their license and they probably still have it with a broker so there may have been a lot of uh, real estate agents and mortgage brokers I'm not sure how that works entirely but that still show as employed and under that uh, sector of still being an agent however are not doing business and have found another form of income so that's another thing to think about and I'm going to try and track this as closely as I can thank you guys so much for tuning in today I'm going to be back with another video tomorrow discussing a different topic or if this has progressed at all if you could like subscribe uh, leave a comment below just letting me know your thoughts I'd really appreciate it uh, and I will be back tomorrow to say hi to you guys again goodbye